Hey there, I'm Brittany Smith and welcome to Filmmaker Symposium. So today we're going to talk about music, one of my favorite topics, and we're going to talk about how to develop a musical theme to support your story. So the first thing you want to do when you're developing music for your, your film is to make sure your music supports a story. Many people forget this aspect because they, they think music is just about feeling and emotion. So they'll create uh, pieces like in a sad scene, they'll go. So they'll create all these emotional minor chords that are supposed to make you feel sad and it kind of forces the audience to feel sad, which audiences really don't like to be forced to feel something. But if you create music that has story inside of it, then you're gonna start um, engaging your audience in a more deep way. Now, the best way to do this is through musical themes. And what I mean by musical themes is developing a melody for each character or a melody for a certain idea in the story. So for instance, we're all familiar with Darth Vader's theme. It goes like, We all know that theme, right? So if you take that theme and you build upon it and develop your character in that way, that little theme almost becomes its own character in and of itself. So you can use that theme throughout your soundtrack and it becomes part of the story. So you'll notice in Star Wars that almost every character has their own theme. Not every single character, but the main characters. Even Leia has her own theme. It goes, um... <laughs> So if you remember that theme, that goes all throughout the trilogy and they use it in different ways and you may not even realize how it's being used. They'll use it in sad ways, they'll use it in romantic ways, maybe in a more upbeat way, um, but that helps support the story and carry you along with the music. So if you're paying attention, Hollywood uses themes quite a bit, and instead of creating just sad music, they'll actually use a theme and make it sad from there. So let's take, for instance, um, Jack Sparrow. So he has this main theme, which goes like... So we all know that theme, right? Well, we could make that more sad because if you play it fast and furious, it's more adventurous and it's more like Jack Sparrow. But let's say Jack Sparrow has a sad scene that we want to express. Well, instead of doing that, you can go something like this. And actually, I think they do that with that theme. You probably recognize that tune because you're like, oh, I remember them using it in that way. Um, so you, there's so many different ways you can use themes instead of trying to force a certain emotion upon your audience. So another thing I would recommend is making sure that you have the proper instruments to experiment with when you're coming up with your theme, because instruments play a big part in what voice that a certain character is going to have. So if you have a theme supporting a certain character, um, you might want to use a flute for a certain person, maybe in a romance or maybe for a woman, or maybe you want to use the cello or whatever it is. You just want to find that voice that you want your character to have. And so I have um, a subscription to East West Sounds. They offer a subscription to all of their instruments. So that means you get strings, piano, um, brass. They even have percussion for those of you who are interested in more action movies. But there are many options out there. You can research them. I just prefer East West Sounds because I have so many instruments at my fingertips. Um, but I, I love East West Sounds because you can adjust the instruments so I can make it sound like it's in a hall or I can make it sound like it's in a in a room. Um, there's so many different options but because I have those tools those instruments can inspire my idea for a certain musical theme. So I'll pick an instrument and I'll be like ah oh, if I just did this and I did that then it would sound like 
I'm expressing this in that character. Uh, so I highly recommend finding a group of instruments that you like and that you can work with just so you can um, get some ideas for your musical themes. <laughs> So your workspace is also super important. You want to make sure that you have a quiet environment where you can just hear yourself and your instrument. Um, when you're creating, the right brain has a different way of thinking. It's not that we only create with the right side of our brain. That's kind of silly, but um, for lack of a better way of explaining it, um, when we get in that right brain mode and we're creating, we think in a different way and we just need to have everything quiet and just kind of focusing on the emotions that we want to draw out of this musical theme and how we can make this theme deeper. And then we can think even more about the complex emotions that are involved. I find that I can't really do that when I have a noisy environment. So my number one go-to is headphones. Um, Headphones are great because it can block out just a little bit of noise, and we do have a lot of little noise, and it's easy to get distracted in our household, but sometimes you might be in an environment that's even noisier than that, so it would be really important to um, have a room that's dedicated to composing. Um, maybe not long term, but make sure you have a space where you can close the door and you can really just create and think about your music. The other thing would be the desk. So the desk that I want is actually $700 and I'm not willing to pay that right now. So there's a lot of other things that I'd rather purchase than a desk for my keyboard and computer. But one thing I did settle for is this TV tray. It's about $20 to $40. You can get it at um, Lowe's, Home Depot, Target, um, but you can come up with something. But the way it works is I just raise it up high and then I just scoop my keyboard underneath. That way I can work with my keyboard and then I have my computer right here. Otherwise, before I had this situation, I was bending over and trying to reset the computer instrument and then play the, my little tune. And it just kind of killed the creativity a little bit. And it really hurt my back, actually. It just I was constantly bending over and it's not a really great way to be creative. So make sure you have a space that's comfortable so that you can create like you need to. <laughs> So after you have all your tools ready to go and you're ready to start composing, um, you're going to sit down at your keyboard or whatever instrument you're working with and just start experimenting. That is the biggest thing with composing. I'm a piano teacher and when I help kids compose, I, the biggest thing I tell them to do is experiment. Just sit at the piano and try different things and you'll be surprised at how many things will kind of pop up and you're like, ooh, I like that. Um, but you need to make sure that you write some of them down because sometimes you'll get into experimenting. You're like, oh, I like that. And you'll keep experimenting and then you'll realize, oh, what was that? I can't remember. So make sure you have a piece of music paper available or maybe you're recording what you're doing with your phone or with your keyboard. You want to make sure you keep all those good ideas. So I'm going to show you an example of how I go about composing music. Um, I have this story idea for the same witch trials. So it's about a girl who, or a young woman, who has grown up in this Puritan community, and she is doing her best to be in the center of the Lord's will and trying to be that perfect Christian that um, the Puritans are kind of known for. And in the midst of her trying to be perfect, all of a sudden these Salem witch trials come into play and she is in full support of them because she's trying to be a good Christian who's against the forces of Satan. Now along the way, one of her relatives actually gets put on trial for the Salem witch trials and is accused of witchcraft. So she's tied between these two things. She, she thinks she's following the Lord and she thinks she's a part of this community that is glorifying God. And then she's got this thing over here where she has a relative who is accused of practicing witchcraft and she knows that they don't practice witchcraft. So now she's going through a state of confusion and not only confusion, but probably grief because she sees the turmoil that this person is going through. And maybe there's some anger and maybe there's questioning of what reality is, maybe questioning even who God is. So um, you've got, I've got this really complex character that I'm trying to develop. And I think what I want in her is 
I want her musical theme to be a little bit more hollow and a little bit more like empty. I want her to be in a state of questioning and wondering. So I came up with this musical theme. It took me probably the combination of a full day to come up with this theme because I just wanted it to be right. Now, I don't know if you can actually hear the sound really well. We'll see after I go into the editing room. But um, when I do this, I've set this particular piano to um, more ambiance. So it sounds more like you're in a hall, but maybe up close to the piano in a hall. I don't know if that's going to be reflected in this microphone. We'll see. But regardless, try to imagine it if you can. It, it's a really good instrument. I really do like it. Um, so here it goes. So that's the melody I came up with, and that's going to be her character melody. And all throughout the screenplay or the movie, there, that's going to be the main theme for her. Um, now there's many ways that I can apply this theme. I can add some harmony. So if I add the left hand, I could do some arpeggios. <laughs> So that's more of like a warm um, sound and it would probably be more of a serious scene. But if I wanted to create a scene that was a little bit more heart racing, I could actually speed up that melody. And I don't know what I would do. I haven't actually experimented with this, so hang in there. Um... <laughs> So you've got that tense, um, like heart racing sort of thing. And maybe she's standing there and she's watching her relative step up to the noose. I don't know. Um, I probably wouldn't use that for that. But anyway, you get the idea. You can use these themes in many different ways and contribute to your story with them. And that's what I love about musical themes. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Filmmaker Symposium. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments. I love talking about music because I'm a music teacher and I love, 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 love composing. So be sure to ask me any questions. I, I do know a lot of technical things, maybe not about um, technology, but I know a lot about um, music theory and stuff like that. So be sure to let me know if you have any questions. And if you like this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe. So I hope to see you next time on Filmmaker Symposium.